animal classification. There are about 1.2 million animal species on Earth, around 900,000 different insect species, and 400,000 different kinds of plants. The reason we know this is because scientists and biologists who study animals, plants, and insects for a living have counted them. If you think that sounds like a big job, you're right! Think of just one animal on Earth, for example, dogs. Did you know that there are hundreds of different kinds of dogs? Now, think of all the different animals, plants, and insects that you see every day. Imagine there are hundreds of species for each of those organisms. That's just the organism that you see daily. There are millions that you don't see. Now, imagine if you were in charge of keeping track of all those plants, animals, and insects. That's a lot of work. Some scientists say it would take almost a thousand years just to catalog every species of animals on Earth. And many species become extinct before they can even be classified. In fact, most scientists believe only about 14% of the total animal species on Earth have been classified. The same is probably true for insects and plants. So, how do scientists and biologists keep track of all those animals, plants, and insects? One way is by organizing them into groups. Maybe you've done something similar with some of your possessions. Take your toys, for example. If you have a playroom, maybe a parent has had you organize that playroom, so it's easier for you to find what you're looking for. When you organize your toys, perhaps you put all the dolls and stuffed animals together in one container, while all the cars, trains, and trucks get put into a different place, and all the Legos and building blocks get put together in another area. This is called classification, and it's a method that scientists use as well. Classification breaks very large groups down into smaller groups. This makes them easier to be studied. Scientists classify animals, plants, and insects based on things they have in common, just like you would with your toys. Taxonomy means to classify living things. Scientists and biologists use a taxonomy chart to classify all the organisms on Earth. This chart includes the following groups. Domain, Kingdom, Phylum, Class, Order, Family, Genus, and Species. These charts help us identify and name all the organisms in the world. The charts look like an upside-down triangle. The domain level at the top is the biggest because it represents the biggest group. This level could represent your house. To help you understand these charts, let's use the example of organizing your toys again. The second level represents your toy room, which is one room inside your home. Inside that room are all your toys. As the levels move further down the triangle, they get more specific. In each level, your toys get separated into smaller groups based more and more on what they have in common. The toy room level includes cars, trucks, balls, books, dolls, stuffed animals, and other squishy toys. The level after that gets even more specific. It might just say stuffed animals, dolls, and squishy toys. And the level after that is very specific. It may say stuffed animals. The last level is the most specific level of all. This level might simply say stuffed animals that are cats. You have now classified your toys. Now, let's take a closer look at how animals are classified. After the domain level on the chart is the kingdom level. This group includes bacteria, archaea, fungi, protista, animals, and plants. Your toy room includes all your dolls, stuffed animals, 
cars, books, and blocks. But to get more specific, you might decide to take just one of those items, like books, and organize that group in more detail. You would do that by taking all your books and separating them based on what they have in common. You could have groups like books about animals, books about science, and books about famous people. That way, if you wanted to read a book about dogs, you could go to your animal book section and then find the book labeled All About Dogs. Having your books separated into categories could make a specific book a lot easier to find. An animal classification chart makes a specific animal easier to find as well. Let's look at the next level on our animal classification chart. After the kingdom level is the phylum level. This level is also broken down into more specific groups. One of those groups is chordata. Within that group are animals with vertebrae and animals without vertebrae. A vertebrate is an animal with a spine. You are a vertebrate. An animal without a spine is called an invertebrate. Let's take a closer look at both vertebrates and invertebrates. Animals without backbones or invertebrates include butterflies, lobsters, spiders, snails, shrimp, jellyfish, scallops, and more. Invertebrates are usually cold-blooded, which means that their body temperature adapts to the temperature of their environment. They breathe through their skin and reproduce by laying eggs. Their regeneration power is usually good, which means they can replace or restore missing body parts, organs, and cells. For example, a starfish can sever one of its limbs and grow a new limb in its place, which is pretty cool. Can you imagine being able to regrow your arm? Vertebrates, on the other hand, can either be warm-blooded like mammals or cold-blooded like fish. They have a very developed blood vascular system, but their ability to regenerate is usually poor. The next level in the animal classification chart is class. In this level, invertebrates and vertebrates are separated again. For instance, all the vertebrates are separated into five classes that you will probably recognize. Mammals, birds, fish, amphibians, and reptiles. Each level after class, order, family, genus, and species becomes even more specific until you finally find the exact animal you're looking for. As you might imagine, classifying all the animals on Earth is a big job, but using a classification system makes that job a whole lot easier. So, the next time you're organizing your toy room, try using a classification system. It'll make your toy easier to find, and you'll be one step closer to becoming a scientist. Hope you had fun learning with us. Visit us at learnbright.org for thousands of free resources and turnkey solutions for teachers and homeschoolers.